Brotherhood? I wouldn't necessarily say that. This isn't a formal meeting. I simply want to clear the air. I think we may have gotten off on the wrong foot when we first met, and I feel like I owe you an apology. Expecting you to embrace the standards of the Brotherhood without having a history with us was unfair. And given that you've adjusted so well to our beliefs, I don't think I needed to push so hard. So there is a human being under all that power armor after all. Sometimes I need a reminder, but yes, there is. When I was an initiate, my sponsor was Paladin Krieg, toughest squad leader I ever served with. He was a model soldier, embodying the values every trainee was striving to achieve. Fiercely loyal, secure in his beliefs, and brave to a fault. From the moment I was assigned to his squad, I was singled out. It felt like he was pushing me harder than the rest of the team. I fought by his side for years, and we had some seriously close calls. But he never explained to me why I was treated that way. It sounds like he was trying to motivate you. If he was, I never got a chance to ask. After I was promoted to Paladin, and I'd moved on to my own squad, I received word that Krieg was killed at Adams Air Force Base. The news was like being kicked in the stomach. I mean, I'd lost some of my brothers and sisters before, but his death, well, it really got to me. It's taken me a long time to realize it, but the reason Creek was so tough on me is the same reason I'm so tough on you. It's because I believe in you, and I don't want to see any of your potential go to waste. What happened at Adams Air Force Base? Back in the capital wasteland, the Brotherhood was at war with a traitorous group of rebels called themselves the Enclave. They maintained a mobile command post at the remains of Adams Air Force Base, just outside of Washington, D.C. The Brotherhood spearheaded an assault on the command post, which was ultimately successful, but costly. Quite a few soldiers died in that battle, and Paladin Creed was among them. He made his mark on history, and whether you choose to believe it or not, you have the potential to do the same. I'm flattered that you have so much faith in me. You've earned that faith by your own hand. Well, I've said what I had to say, and I hope that it meant something to you. I trust you'll keep this in confidence, of course. Some of that information was of a personal nature, and, well, I'd like to keep it that way. All right. Forgive me, this is difficult. When you were first placed under my sponsorship, I had some serious reservations about it. Despite all that, this has turned out to be a rewarding experience for both of us. At this point, honestly, I don't feel like there's anything else I could teach you about being a Brotherhood soldier that you don't already know. It's apparent from your attitude and your actions that you intend to keep those ideals close to your heart. I'm flattered to hear this, but I feel like there's more. There is. I'm just not very good at these sort of things. Let me start at the beginning. I grew up alone in the capital wasteland. Spent most of my childhood picking through the ruins and selling scrap. When I was a bit older and had a few caps to my name, I moved into Rivet City and opened a junk stand. While I was there, I met a guy named Cutler. We got along pretty well. Watched each other's backs and kept each other out of trouble. When the Brotherhood came through on a recruiting run, we felt like it was a way out of our nowhere lives. So we joined up. Rivet City. It must be post-war, because I've never heard of it. You're right. It was a settlement, built inside the remains of a beached aircraft carrier. One of the safest places to live in the capital wasteland, until the Brotherhood arrived. It was the perfect location for me to try my hand at being a merchant. I have a hard time picturing you as anything but a soldier. Clearly, I was ignoring my calling. Anyway, about a year after we were posted to the Pridwin, Cutler vanished on a scouting hop. It took some convincing, but I was able to persuade my CO to let me assemble a squad and search for him. It took almost three weeks, but we tracked his team down to a super mutant hive. Those wretched abominations had slaughtered everyone but Cutler. He should have been so lucky. The mutant bastards used their FEV to change him into one of their own kind. He wasn't Cutler anymore. I had to... It was my duty to put him down.
Are you sure there wasn't anything you can do to change him back? The FEV effect is irreversible. There was nothing anyone could do. You did the right thing. It's what I was taught. I don't know if it was right. Ever since Cutler died, I've seen other soldiers come and go. Some were brave, some were honest. Hell, some were even downright heroic. But I'd never considered any of them to be a good friend. A friend like Cutler was. Until now. It's a good feeling, but it frightens me all the same. Having a bond with someone, then losing them. It changes you. I don't want to go through that again. Well, there goes my dream of being reborn as a super mutant. <laughs> Glad to have changed your mind. I just thought you deserved to know how I felt. If you feel that I've overstepped my bounds, I completely understand. Whatever the case may be, I appreciate the fact that you took the time to listen. She's as dedicated as they come. A real team player. I couldn't agree more. But I wasn't looking for an evaluation of her performance as a scribe. I wanted to know what you thought of Halen as a person. So there is a heart beating under all that armor after all. I suppose I deserve that. I just don't normally find these discussions easy to handle, so I try to avoid them at all costs. The truth is, I'm worried about her. Since you and I are getting along so well, I felt like I could confide in you about it, to get your honest opinion. She seems to be able to handle herself. Why are you worried? Helen is a model scribe. This has nothing to do with her capabilities in the field. A few months before you found us, one of my men was shot multiple times by raiders. Halen stayed by that knight's side for two days straight, without sleep, fighting to keep him alive. But he was on a slow decline. I decided that his suffering needed to end and ordered Halen to administer an overdose of painkillers so he could die with dignity. Even though I'm certain she wanted to continue fighting for that knight's life, she injected him without question. She did the right thing. Of course she did. But the decision whether or not to ease that soldier's suffering isn't the point here. The point is what happened later that same evening. Halen approached me while I was on watch. She didn't say a word, but I could tell something was wrong. After what felt like an eternity, she collapsed into my arms, crying. I didn't know what to do, so I just held her for a while. A few minutes later, she stopped, kissed me on the cheek, and simply said, thank you, before heading back into the police station. Right then, it hit me. Maybe I pushed her too hard. I ordered her to ignore her instincts to do something her medical training told her was wrong. That's why I'm worried about her. And for that matter, everyone under my command. Come on, Dance. What is it you're really worried about here? I don't know. Look, four soldiers. Over half of my team are gone. Each one of them died because of decisions that I made. I understand the risks that come with the job. We all do. But how can anyone have confidence in me anymore? Hell, how can I have confidence in myself? There's no guarantees in life, Dance. We just do the best we can, and we press on. That's sound advice, soldier. Well, it looks like things have taken a turn. I signed up to be your sponsor, so I teach you everything that I know. But it looks like I'm the one that needed the lesson today. All joking aside, I'm pleased that we had this discussion. And with all the problems you're facing, you still took the time to listen. It's comforting to know that I can speak to you as more than just your commanding officer. I'm here anytime you need me, Dance. Good. I may take you up on that someday. Anyway, thanks for letting me get that off my shoulders. I think it's been weighing on me more than I realized. I'm only sorry you had to see me at my worst instead of at my best. Paladin Dance. Did you have May time have the for, for this shootout. personal matter I mentioned? Things are getting rough out there, folks. Might want to think okay, twice. Dance? I'm sorry. 
I really thought this would be easier to talk about. There's so much I wanted to say, but I don't know where to start. Take it easy, Dance. Whatever it is, I'll help you work through it. I don't know if anything will help me work through it. I've spent my entire life, or at least what I perceive as my life, following a plan to shape my own future. But since my banishment, I feel lost. Almost like I exist without purpose. For the first time since that moment I signed up with the Brotherhood, I don't have all the answers. I don't have a plan, and it scares the hell out of me. Do you really need a plan? That's not the point. Don't you understand? Everything I had, everything I knew is gone. In the span of a few hours, my identity was ripped from me and my world turned upside down. At least what you had was something tangible, something real. Your wife, your son. They were living, breathing humans who loved you and cared for you. Those sons of bitches who created me couldn't even be bothered to implant memories of having siblings or parents. I don't even know how much of my own past is artificial and how much is real. Can you even imagine that? I started out as nothing. And I've ended up as nothing. And I don't know what the hell to do about it. Hang in there, Dance. You need to fight this thing. I'm not giving up. Not yet. I suppose you're right. Maybe I'm just missing the point. My life's starting over. And I need to come to terms with everything I've lost and everything I've gained, which includes something important you've made me realize. I don't know if it's friendship or an anomaly in my programming. After all, I'm not really human, but whatever it is. I can't deny that I'm feeling closer to you than anyone else I've ever met. As far as I'm concerned, you're like a brother to me. The best of friends. And I'll do everything I can to live up to it. Look, I know that this has been difficult for you. In fact, I don't envy some of the recent decisions you've had to make. If our roles had been reversed, I'm not so sure I could have handled it as well as you did. Whatever the case may be, I just want to thank you for sticking by me, and remind you that what I said before still stands. If you need me, of the I'll be here for you. For years now, you have suspected that the instant...